Hey everyone, this is Third Koopa here with a, a quick tutorial, sort of, for getting your Game Boy games boxed up into cassettes. In this tutorial, we're going to go over finding the cassette cases, getting game covers, printing game covers, and putting your games and covers in the cassette cases. Um, for this tutorial, I would like to say that the hardest part, in some terms, is going to be finding the cassette cases. So for a lot of these, thrift stores like Goodwill are your best options usually in terms of price and availability, but there are a few available on Amazon and if you search around websites, I'm sure you can find a few in pristine condition. So yeah, I hope this video isn't too rough. There will be some links below that should help, and of course there will be a blog post about this in written form for this entire tutorial. Thanks. So for storing your retro games in cassette cases, one of the easiest places to get a bunch at is a Goodwill. They should normally have these close to the CD aisle, as you can see, a bunch of CDs, suddenly cassettes. Just be sure to always check the quality in the ones at Goodwill, they are probably the cheapest place to get them at bulk, if not at a local thrift store. And take a look, open inside, make sure everything's good. Be minded that, unless if you have a use for cassettes, you're going to have a lot of Especially if you're doing this in bulk, you're going to have a lot of these cassettes and papers lying around. Just take a look at all of them, like this one for example is good, good. Let's, let's find a bad one just to see if there are no bad ones today, that'll be awfully strange. Um, here's, here's an example of one, like, ah, found one. So it's a bit broken up as you, can, you might be able to see here, the iPhone camera is a little bit weird. Um, has a few scratches, which isn't exactly good, but more importantly, it already has marker written on it. And, I mean, of course you don't want to be picky since these are $10, but at the same time, they're so cheap, and it usually won't be that hard to find a place that has them. And that is for getting the cassette cases in bulk. Okay, so this is the part of the video where I get to show you how to actually make the cassette boxes. Um, in some cases, there's going to be a few that are pre-made. The ones without the full spelling out are the ones that are pre-made. There's not going to be ones for every single game, though, since there's a lot of Game Boy Color, Game Boy, and Game Boy Advance games out there. Um, so here's one that was pre-made that I liked, and I downloaded it. There's a few sites in the description below for that, and I hope those help most people. But for the less common Game Boy games... Um, here's an example of what I was able to create in about, I want to say, three minutes up in Photoshop. So I will show you all how to do that. Now this should be easy if you have a copy of Photoshop or if you have a copy of any image editing program. Paint.net is actually free and is where the original templates work with. The templates are also available in the description below for download. So let's get started here. I'm going to download a... Let's just say for the sake of this one, we will do a Game Boy Advance template, because these ones I personally find are the hardest ones to work with. I'm going to open that into Photoshop, and then we're going to grab a Game Boy Advance case. We're going to grab one that I like. Hmm. Um, well, we're going to grab one from here, actually. Let's just grab Final Fantasy VI. You can't go wrong with Final Fantasy VI. So we open into Photoshop here. And you just download these, you just like search by the way, you just take a Google search and go and just check for the game box art. They should have some on the cover project I think for these as well that are better done. If they don't have it, thankfully you can find it through any stock art. There's actually an example of this that I did just to show real fast. They didn't have one for World's, um, World's Heroes 2 Jet, so I ended up just taking the stock box art and doing that. Sorry to distract if this is too much for people, but anyways, we take the select tool, we grab onto here as much as we can, we want to eliminate as much of the Game Boy Advance part as we can, but sometimes it might be needed to copy some of it, and we go all the way down here on the layers menu to the project file that we have open of the template, we press paste, and to top that off, if we don't like the size of it, like, I think this works, oh, some of the final gets into the border here, so we want to go to edit, free transform, and for Mac users, I apologize if this was wrong, but we hold the shift key and 
we transform it, and bam, voila. So there's Final Fantasy VI Advance on there. Not the best, I know, but not the worst. So we take this as well, and we take the color it was done in. And since this is an easy one to do for a simple example, we just take the color, and with Color Picker, we paint it on the background. Now you might be panicking, but hang on. We take that layer and put it below there, and to top it off, we just need our logo now. So thankfully, thanks to these ones printed for DS boxes normally, we're able to grab our logo, logo here, and copy it, paste it, and um, we want to put it above both of the layers, but below the rest of the layers for the template. It already fits perfectly on. Um, thankfully, some of the auto aligning tools are pretty useful for this template. I'm pretty sure Paint.net has those as well. And do, 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 do. I don't like some of the stuff here. Sometimes it might be needed to use the zoom in tool to check specifics and for details to make sure you print this right. Sometimes it's better to be patient and get this done one by one than having to be like, oh shoot, now I have to reprint a bunch of cases. So there you have it. It looks nice, spiffy, done well, and we just save it and um, the best way I advise saving these files is saving them as PNG, but we save them as PNG. Now what we're going to want to do here, I lost the video footage to this point, but if you have your cassette images done, gotten from someone else, or by yourself, no matter what, right now I want you to open Microsoft Word or any other Word document that you have that's able to print. I know it might seem comedic, but trust me, it'll save you with printing in the long run. Hopefully censored a part out, thank goodness, but um... We want to take our cases and let's just take two of the Game Boy Color ones. We are going to take a case we want here to print. Let's take R Type DX. We press Enter button three times. And then we take another case. Trust me in where this is going for printing this. Like, um, all right. My bad. And bam. Two cases per page when you print these out in color at no extra cost. Now, of course, if you press the Enter key one more time, it ends up putting it to another page. And if you end up putting it without the Enter key, which you might be asking, why can't I just not use the Enter key? Then it'll possibly print too close, which we don't want that for cutting these out. And that's really all there is to it. Um, I am putting up a text tutorial as well, in case I didn't explain this well. Apologies for the cutout as well, but I'm creating a text tutorial for this, which should hopefully answer any and all questions, and I'll have that a little bit more in detail. And if that doesn't answer any questions about Photoshop or anything else, then um, you can feel free to message me on one of the sites I'm on, or just use YouTube, and hopefully I will not be lazy and actually read it at some point. <laughs> um... So yeah, that's it for this part, and next part we will be getting to how to actually put them in the cases. So oh, apologies. So apologies for the weird camera angle on this, but now that we've got our covers printed out, and this is black and white purely for test demoing examples, um, and we've got our cassette boxes, it's time to get the rest done, get these cut up, um, put them in the cases, and call it a day. For Game Boy Color games and Game Boy games, I'll go into a little bit more specifically how to fit them in there. Um, but yeah, the camera view is a bit wonky. So a cutter board is generally good for these. I don't know what they call them, by the way. I'm not always the best with names. But we want to just put this in. Um, we want to get as little white as possible. For a lot of collectors, I imagine that they'll not want any um, white lines at all. And we just cut we just cut away okay so I'm going to cut this one purposely pretty badly but it's, um, it's a little bit hard to do it while in video but this should give you the general idea of what to do at least um, we take this Now, we take these cassette cases we bought, whether whether you bought yours at, you may have to do more to them to make them work. We take them and throw the cassette out. We throw this out. Now, we have our insert. 
we want to fold up our insert two ways. We want to fold it up by the Game Boy part. So right here and right here. So hopefully it should come out something like this. This is a bit badly done. <laughs> As I said, like, I deeply apologize for the terribleness of this. And what we want to do is take our case, slide it on in. It, this needs a little bit more cutting. And trim it out. Or actually, I will take one and... There's a lot of really awkward silence right now, and I better not do that. Okay. Okay. So we take the one we have now, now that I've cut it up a little bit. This is a bit badly done, so don't follow the same ways I did. But for those who've done custom covers already, this will probably be way less badly done than mine is. Now, this is where we have it, and you can fit your Game Boy Advance games in there. Here's an example of a better made one. And we take Golden Sun, and we throw it in here. And it fits in there perfectly. But for those, um, you'll need, you need a set of pliers to break it off for a Game Boy game. And for use of a Game Boy game or a Game Boy Color game, got ourselves Kirby's Dream Land 2 right over here. And so as you see, it regularly does not fit. That's okay though, because we just take the pliers from the top and... We get this broken off as much as we can, but just try not to break the case while you're at it. You want to move it, like, gently, but you don't want to move it too hard, and you want to move it close to the base in there. It's a little bit hard to see here, but... You don't want to rip the whole case apart. Thankfully, cases, as we've gone over, are a little bit more durable than the usual. So we spin it, and did it come off? Um, I think I ended up making a crack in the case instead. Oops. Okay. Okay, I think I've got this this time. Go just a little bit more. we've broken it off. So this actually did not break the case. It gave it a little bit of wear. Hopefully you don't do that or you have a little bit of a safer method, but there you go. It's a little bit of, um, like it looks damaged, but it's actually not. And we take our game, we put it in there, and it also fits nicely and smoothly. So for an example of a better done one for this, um, some hinges break off easier than others, by the way, so some should go off within a breeze, but that one's a little bit more of a complex one and not as example worthy. And they don't move around much at all. Uh, let me get one that you can actually see. And there you go, that's how you put your Game Boy games in cassettes. Um, in cassette cases, I hope this has helped a few people. I hope this series of videos meshed together have helped some people. If not, then the description below you can either find links to the blog posts on this, or should that not work, um, hopefully some of the other links down below will help. Feel free to contact me, and I hope this has helped a few people get some awesome game cases in. I can't wait to see some rolling.